Hello everyone and welcome back to my intro to Unreal Engine 4 tutorial series. In this uh, video we're going to be covering geometry brushes and how to use them and how to edit them. Um, geometry brushes are mainly used to block out your levels. So you'll, you'll set up a simple level design um, and block it out ahead of time and then add your final art. Such as, here's my example. So here's a block out using geometry brushes. And then you test, make sure everything works fine there. And then here's the final level with actual static meshes everywhere. Essentially the same thing as far as the, the gameplay is concerned. Um, so it's much easier to work with a simple setup before you jump in and start trying to put finalized art into the scene. Um, so that being said, I'll show you how to get going. Um, under the modes panel, under the place tab, go to geometry and then there's these, um, what is it, seven types you can use. Um, I'm just going to start with a, a box, so if you just drag it in there, it will create a box. Um, these things do come with collisions, so uh, you can see if I walk into it, it does have a collision. That's nice. Um, when you create one of these, there you can go over here into the details panel, and you can change the settings for, let's make it thin, let's, pre let's make this like a wall, so I'll make it longer and maybe a bit taller. And I'm not going to be really too precise because these are just placeholders, essentially. Um, but you can see when I adjust it here, it doesn't change the checker pattern, which means the textures should all be um, fine. They shouldn't be stretching. If you, if you actually um, scale this thing, though, like say if I scaled it instead of actually change the shape, it will stretch all your textures out. So if these aren't square, you're doing it wrong. Um, that being said, we can go ahead. I'll show you how to take this and put a hole in it so we can make like a doorway. Um, we'll use another box, but instead of additive, we're going to try subtractive. You can drag that box down. And it's kind of invisible at the moment, but once you put it through a geometry an existing geometry brush, it will um, cut it out. And it'll even create a kind of an interior place to put textures. Um, it's kind of tempting just to scale this up if I wanted to make a, a, a taller door frame, but you can see it does screw up my textures um, on the inside. So you could do that by um, just changing it over here instead. It should be much easier and you don't have to worry about it. Um, ideally, you'd want to have like a, a placeholder, a mannequin or something, so you know how big the, the player character is. This is fine for my purposes for now. And you can see when you do the subtractive, it also creates um, collision, you know, a subtractive collision. It redoes it all for you, which is nice. Um, let's say, so you can see up here, sometimes these guys are hard to find, the subtractive ones. Um, I have, let's see, collision turned on. If you don't have collision, if you go to show and turn on collision, if you don't have that, you won't really see it. And you can, you can find it in here in the outliner. Box brush one and two. You might be better off giving it an actual name. Um, but if you just turn on show collision, you can kind of see them easier in the scene. Uh, let's see. So, that being said, let's do a little bit of editing. That's, that's how you just plop basic geometry down. Let's say I want to edit this guy. I'll just do some simple, quick editing. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, you can use your move, rotate, transform like usual on this, but there's a couple more tricks. If you go into modes panel, into the geometry editing tab right here, um, make sure it's on edit, and then we can just click directly on either a face, a vertice, or an edge. Edges are kind of a tricky to, to grab sometimes, but you can grab any of those and move them as needed. Um, so let's say if I wanted to do whatever, just go. There's a lot you can do with this, but um, maybe I want to make this a little skinnier. This is another way to do it where it doesn't ruin your texturing. So let's say if I wanted to make this thing all from one piece, if I want to just kind of build out from it, I can try that. So let's see, I'll select this um, 
face here. And instead of editing this time, I'm going to try extruding. It'll tell me that it only works with local coordinate system, which means that um, it's based off of where the, the uh, geometry is that you're using. It's not based off the world. So up is not always up. Up is whichever way the geometry is, is facing. So don't worry about that. Just click close and it will it'll set the right one. You can change it here if needed, but you can only do the extrusion, I guess, in uh, local space. Anyway, so I have all that going. Um, I can just drag it out. And since I had extrude selected, it extrudes. So it adds an actual piece of geometry instead of just tweaking it. Um, I did that because now I can um, grab one of these and extrude it. Oh. So in edit mode, this is what happens. Um, doesn't work. I want to extrude because I want to add geometry to it. Okay, um, let's do it one more time. So we have the back part. And this is sloppy. I mean, this isn't how I would um, necessarily build any kind of building, but um, it's just to show you general technique. Um, okay, so good enough. Extrude. Yes, okay. Uh, and then let me extrude the other one. Where's my regular perspective? Okay, so extrude, select this guy. Still on extrude. I'm going to pull it out. Just trying to kind of line it up here. Um, you know, and extrude this guy over to seal it off. That makes a little room. You can continue that with, you know, adding more to a roof, or you can just do a, a new roof where it's like geometry, throw a box brush down. We probably want it um, skinny. Uh, this way skinny. You know, obviously do a, a more precise job, but something like that down move it in and then with the we can set the snap to 15 so we can get a nice 45 degree angle real easily here here's where the world and the local comes in so up for this uh, locally is that way but up for it in the world setting is up so in this case I do want actually up world um, value so Whatever, say I make that, hold alt and drag, I can make another copy of it, spin it around. I mean, now you have some kind of placeholder house, you know. Later on you'll go back in, you'll have an artist or you'll do it yourself and you'll, you'll put, uh, you'll replace this with something decent. Uh, but for now, at least it's got collision, the, uh, everybody can see how the levels are working or not working and you can easily kind of move these things around. Um, one last thing I want to show you is, let's see, if I grab... Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think I have to hold control. So I select all these guys. You can also select them here, which I would probably recommend. Um, and then, let's see, under, under brush settings, you can open up this advanced tab and create a static mesh out of this thing. Um, you get to call it something, so I'll just call it house, create that, and now this is one big static mesh. Um, static meshes actually run a little faster than these geometry brushes, so if you're going to keep them, I would probably convert them at the end. Uh, it's not necessary, but it does help um, once you want to do things like um, destruction or other kind of things that require a static mesh. Um, so hopefully that was uh, some help. Um, I wanted to show one more thing. So if when you're dropping some of these guys down, if you select a material ahead of time and you plop it in, it'll automatically apply, which is nice. Um, so it applies to all the faces of the stairs. Um, but yeah, that's general geometry brushes, how to use them as static meshes, how to use them for uh, quick prototyping and blockouts. And in the next video, I'll go quickly over how to 
change the surfaces and kind of put materials on on this house or something like that all right guys i hope hope that was helpful and i'll see you in the next video bye